Currently, we have many tools available for people who want to protect themselves from becoming HIV infected depending on what their risks are. One of those tools is a combination pill called Truvada. It's a combination of uh, tenofovir and emtricitabine, currently approved for use in people who are HIV positive as part of a combination regimen to control HIV. Studies have shown that that drug, Truvada, when used before exposures to HIV as part of pre-exposure prophylaxis or PrEP, can be very effective at reducing the acquisition of new infections. Because that drug is available, people are able to take that drug off-label um, to prevent HIV infection. With FDA approval of the drug, Truvada, with an indication for prevention, that changes the game. So insurance companies will now have a labeled approved indication to pay for, reimburse uh, Truvada when used appropriately as PrEP. Uh, and also the FDA will have reviewed all of the data available and provided its endorsement of those data suggesting that this is really a valuable tool and the data support the use of, uh, of Truvada in prevention of, of HIV infections. So having the FDA approval for Truvada is really a, a great step forward in making this a routine part of our uh, armamentarium and preventing HIV infection among those at risk. The next steps with FDA approval of Truvada for PrEP is understanding how to use it. So there are a number of questions that are really on the table right now about the most effective use for, of Truvada as PrEP. One is identifying the, the groups at risk. So how do people really at risk identify and how do we identify them as being at risk and engage them into care so that they can become aware of all the different options for pre prevention and see if PrEP is something that fits in with their needs for prevention. Um, additionally, we have to make sure that people are HIV negative when they start PrEP, so there's a testing component, and we need to routinely screen people for HIV while they're on PrEP. PrEP is not 100% effective, so we need to monitor people for new infections. Um, one tool in, that will help with that was the recent uh, approval of uh, home testing for HIV. So there's now a rapid non-prescription home-based test that people can use um, to test themselves at home. So uh, that may be another tool that we can use in conjunction with PrEP to do safety monitoring and monitor when people, uh, th their HIV status while on PrEP. So uh, our health departments and our community organizations are really mobilizing right now to study this and to understand um, how is PrEP, Truvada, best prescribed and monitored in, in community settings. Um, so health departments, clinics, and community-based organizations are really uniting to do demonstration projects um, and to figure out the best ways to make this, this newest and perhaps a very effective tool available to the most widely, um, make it available widely to those most at risk. So we have a lot to learn still about how PrEP is best used, but the exciting thing is having this tool and the communities are really mobilizing around PrEP as prevention to understand how it's best used. Uh, another important question for PrEP is just safety. So as with any medication, there are risks, although small, for side effects with tenofovir and uh, emtricitabine with Truvada. Um, in particular, we worry about kidneys and bone health. So it will be important for people who are negative and at risk for HIV taking PrEP to be monitored for side effects of the medication. So all of those issues are things that we need to now uh, operationalize in a real world setting with our health departments, community-based organizations, HIV providers, primary health clinics, all of those players, insurance companies, everybody needs to be at the table to figure out the best way to operationalize this to bring the tool to the, the people at risk.